All right, guys, the first major forward-facing sonar announcement of 2024 has, has been officially announced. You know, the National Professional Fishing League officially made its announcement. I think it was today. They completely banned forward-facing sonar. And I want to take a second to talk about this because my perspective is going to be a little bit different. We got a, we got a little Lincoln man watching a movie and crying a little bit in the background. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm fishing MPFL this year. Also, the Bassmaster Elites, you know, it's no secret. I fish the Elites. That's my number one priority. But I fish the MPFL also. They don't conflict. So, during those weeks, the MPFL can be my number one priority. But the biggest thing is, you know, a lot of people are very emotional about this topic. And for whatever reason, people feel extremely strongly. Like, people are saying that the MPFL just committed suicide. There's, it's going to be the death of the league. All this type of stuff. And, you know, first and foremost... None of us anglers that fished the MPFL paid those entry fees and invested all this money to get a front row seat at watching a company go down. And then also Brad, Mike, those guys at MPFL, Paul, Al, all those guys, they have not put four years of work and sweat equity into this to throw it all away on a whim decision. Like this has been something that's been talked about for at least a year, it seems like, you know. So I, I would say that no matter if you agree or disagree, you have to understand that they're doing what they think is right. That doesn't mean it is right. That doesn't mean it's not right, but they're doing what they believe is right. And you know, you have to kind of respect somebody that takes a stand and goes against the grain a little bit to do what they believe is right. Now, my personal opinion on forward facing sonar is take it out of the equation as far as competition. I don't care if it's allowed or not allowed for competition. Um, it doesn't make it easier if you have it or harder if you don't have it or harder if you have it or harder if, or, or it's the same exact competition level because you're trying to beat the same people with it. I'm talking about if I fish the Bassmaster Elite Series and it's allowed. I'm fishing against a hundred killers and if we ban it I'm still fishing against a hundred killers now I'm not I have skirt certain skill sets I think I'm pretty good forward face sonar I've got some things that I'm pretty good at without it but the competition to me is irrelevant it's it's very very difficult to do good in a hundred boat field whether it's allowed or not so I look at it from the aspect of sponsors and the industry and what it's doing to the industry and how it's affecting sponsors. For years and years and years, the business model has been the endemic companies are 90% of what funds this industry. Like there are some non-endemics, like Toyota's a big sponsor. I have a Toyota. Like there's some big non-endemic sponsors, but at least 80% of the money that goes back into this industry are endemic sponsors reinvesting that money in us in the leagues and all this type of stuff in media like there's tons of different ways that they put back into the industry and whenever you whenever there's something that blatantly affects their business model that they have ran off of for years and years and years and years that's bad for the industry long term it just has to be we got a we got a crazy baby climbing chairs over here we'll see if he's going to grab the camera he looked like he was uh, making an ascent to the top but uh, anyways the point I'm getting at is these companies sell, I'm sponsored by Rappler. They sell hard baits. You know, they sell the DT6, one of the best selling crankbaits of all time. They make the OG series, came on super, super strong. OG Tiny, OG Slim, you know, the new Maverick jerk bait, the, the Jowler topwater bait, like all that type of stuff is, they're phenomenal baits. They're second to none, but people don't use them as much as they used to because of forward facing sonar and it's not that they're not phenomenal baits and they can't compete they've just became extremely situational so whenever you look at a company's value to the sponsors a company could be me and my company my business or it could be the mpfl or the elites and their value to sponsors it comes from their ability to sell product so whenever you have a product now that you're presenting to the public that doesn't sell the bread and butter for these companies the money's going to go away eventually it has to go away because they're not making the profits that they can to, to reinvest it into the industry and now 
Obviously, I'm in a very, very fortunate situation being sponsored by Crush City. The best forward-facing sonar bay of all time is a Crush City Freeloader. And then the second best is probably a Crush City Mooch Minnow. And then obviously they have the Maverick Jerk Bait. That pretty much will cover you all over the country. But that doesn't mean that it's good for the overall outlook of the sport just because Crush City is thriving. Because as much as Crush City is thriving, you know, like Rapalum is selling less hard baits. That's just, that's just a fact of the matter. I'm sponsored by 13 Fishing. People aren't buying near as many bait casters. They're buying a lot of spinning rods. So the, the business aspect of it is something that you have to, to also think about. Look at Link. He ain't gonna be no scoper. Is he? He might be. He's about to go get it. He might be a scoper. He might be a scoper. What do you think? Tell him hey. Little Link Link. He's all over the place. Can't get him to slow down. But anyways, my point to the whole video is that you have to look at it from a bigger lens and not just what affects you personally. Like I'm having a really, really good year on the MPFL. I've weighed in 60 bass on the MPFL, and I bet 45 of them, if not 48, 50 of the 60, I've caught with forward-facing sonar. And I'm still, I, I, my personal opinion is, it's bad for the industry. And to say that, at the same time, knowing it benefits me to have it, and then saying that I think it's bad for the industry kind of goes, it's kind of talking out both sides of the mouth, but that's what I believe because it's, the, like I said, the industry's business model, I don't see how it succeeds letting this run rampant. And to be quite honest with y'all, electronics are the driving force of the industry over the past year or two. And I would say across the board, electronic sponsorships are some of the worst sponsorships that professional anglers have. And that, I, I might get in trouble for that, but I don't really have an electronic sponsor, so whatever. But, uh, you know, it's bad whenever something is the focal point of the industry, which is what electronics are. They're the focal point of the industry right now, and they don't give back to the industry as much as hard bet companies, rod companies, stuff like that, because I know, I know what these deals look like and I know that electronic companies are not the ones that need to make all the profit because they do not give it back. They, they, they don't sponsor people to the level that they should. That's just my opinion. So I don't see how the business model works going forward if we allow it to run rampant and everybody's buying, you know, like Mooch Minnows, huge selling bait, but it's a phenomenal bait and it lasts forever. A pack of mooch minnows will last you a week. That's not really good for business, you know? Um, Yamakatsu's got the, the hybrid head. They're phenomenal, but I'm not throwing them in brush, you know? That's the issue, is they're, I'm not, we're not losing them. They're not selling as many baits as they were before. And This may sound bad to say that that's what you need, but that's what you need to drive a business. It's just like light bulb companies. They can easily make a light bulb that will last forever, but they don't because then you'll never buy another one. So they make the filament small enough to where it can burn out eventually. So, you know, the technology is there. They just don't to have repeat customers. So anyways, the MPFL made the ban. I think it's a good move on their part. I really do. And my recommendation to them was why not? There's no reason not to. From a business side, you could get some of these companies that, you know, kind of open their eyes that somebody's willing to do this and potentially gain sponsorship. That There's some guys that'll say, I'll never fish the MPFL now because they banned it. And that's fine, but that's self-serving, you know? And right now, I don't know if the correct move is to ban it. I don't know if the correct move is to keep it. I have no idea. But my speculation is that it's bad for the business model that we have currently to allow it to run rampant. And uh, I know a lot of bait manufacturers share that opinion that I have. And like I said, this is not a fact. This is just my speculation and how I feel. So I think the MPFL made a good move. Uh, I don't think it's a mandatory move by any means by the organizations, but I think they made a good move and I second it. And I think it will be really, really fun next year to have a more diverse 
array of techniques that we can use. You know, like on the Bassmaster Elites this year, there was a bunch of tournaments where you didn't need but two rods, you know? And that's just not that fun to me. Like, I like diversity in the techniques that we use. Like, I like going up and, you know, skipping a frog under a bush, going out, seeing one lay, lay down and flipping it. You know, I might go fish a brush pile or two, skip a dock or two. By the end of the day, I've used eight or nine different baits and I've caught them on five of the nine different baits. And, you know, it, to me, that's what makes bass fishing special. And that's, that's the sport that I like. But anyways, just want to kind of give you all my op opinion on that. I, I think it was a good move. And I know Hunter thinks it was a good move also. So MPFL is in a position right now where they need to separate themselves from the pack. And they did this and... You know, next year, bass may go to a lake, like, let's just say bass goes to Lake Eufaula, and the MPFL goes to Lake Eufaula, you know, right here close to me. Yeah, the weights in the Bassmaster Elite Series event, if we allow a live scope, are going to be tremendously better. But you have to understand the difference. You know, yeah, the MPFL goes there and gets less, has less weight, but it's because they don't have that tool that drives the weights up. You know, so we'll see how that goes. But the general public, I think they should, they will be able to understand that it's different. It's completely different. Like it's not even fair to compare a tournament with it to a tournament without it. Because you're fishing for an entirely different type of fish as soon as it's allowed. So anyways, that's my take on it. Just want y'all to think about it from that standpoint that I think it's good for the industry if there's more diversity. It's definitely good for the industry if there's more diversity in the techniques that win tournaments. So, I think it's good for the industry to have some tournaments that'll definitely be won on different baits next year. What do you think, Hunter? I agree. You agree? I agree. <laughs> Hunter ain't a fan of no scope. But, uh, anyways. Also, also, I have something to say. We're also out of the newborn trenches, and we have a whole month. So, if you have any video ideas, let us know. Yep. It's going to be good. So, anyways. We have until the 22nd. Before we leave them. Yep. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you watching. Just wanted to give y'all a pro's take because I fished the MPFL and I fished the Elites, and it was full force allowed this year. Be different next year. So I'll reflect on this again next year after fishing some tournaments without it. I'll go back and talk about kind of how it feels and how it seemed and how different it was. So, but anyways, that's my take on it.